Oh, hello there. I was just reading. Reading is real. This is my review for Nocturnal Animals. Uh, now I've, I've been hearing a lot of mixed things about this movie, and I, I don't quite understand why. I think this movie is really smart, and I think it's really clever, on top of its really stylish and beautiful look to it. And I, I mean, you know, both of the, wow. Anyway, um, uh, so the movie is is ultimately three storylines kind of wrapped up in one. So you have the uh, the storyline of Amy Adams a, a, in her current state. You know, she's married to uh, Army Hammer, and uh, she is kind of miserable. She's I don't know. I, she might just generally be sad. I don't really know. Her marriage is kind of falling apart. It's not going too well. She's a she's an artist and. Um, She's doing every, everything she can to uh, kind of keep that happiness up. Well, one day, her husband sends her a book. So then she starts to read – her ex-husband sends her a book. She starts to read that book, and uh, it turns out that there are some similarities. And if not similarities, like it's kind of a metaphor for what goes on in real life, for what we perceive happens in their real life. Uh, the third storyline is her past. We see her and Jake Gyllenhaal's relationship together, uh, how it came together and how it kind of fell apart. That one's kind of quicker. It's not as focused on, but it's important to what happens. Um, anyway, I've heard a lot of people say that um, there, some of the storylines are better than others and other things like that, and that it may not be as good as it thinks it is. But I disagree. I really think this is a good solid, interesting movie. I left this movie thinking and excited and completely intrigued to see more Tom Ford films, to see more from Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm always down for more Jake Gyllenhaal. And definitely to see more of Amy Adams. Uh, as far as the cast goes, uh, Amy Adams is terrific, as she usually is. Um, she doesn't pick a lot of bad movies. She does a lot of just really good, really interesting films. And I'm always very interested to see what she's doing next. Obviously, I was very excited to see her in Arrival. She was really good in Fighter. Uh, and she was even really good in Enchanted. You know, it's what turned me on to her in the first place. Uh, then you have Jake Gyllenhaal, who as well doesn't do a whole lot of bad films. Uh, especially since apparently he fired his agent or whatever, after Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. He was headed down the wrong path, a very sandy path, full of sadness and bad movies. And then he, boom, turned tail, and he became the indie darling that we know him as now. Uh, he's great all the way back in Donnie Darko, which is my personal favorite film of all time. I love that movie, it's crazy. Uh, he's great in Nightcrawler from two years ago. And pretty much any time he shows up, you know that he's going to dedicate 110% to whatever role he gives. And it's no different here. He essentially plays two different characters, and they're both really great, and they're both fleshed out. The diff they're, they are kind of the same character, but there's distinct enough differences to where they're completely different people. I, I loved that. I loved that that was... That was an element at play. He does such a good job. And uh, let's not forget about Michael Shannon because that man deserves an Oscar. He was incredible in this movie. He had just this wonderfully subtle sense about him. And he just, every scene he was in, I was invested to 110%. Um, uh, as far as the storyline goes, I talked about that. I really loved the storyline. Uh, this thing is shot so slick and stylishly. You know, it's it's uh, Tom Ford apparently is a it was a fashion designer. Uh, he made another movie called The Single Man a couple of years ago, which is a really really solid film starring Colin Firth. Deals with a lot of very interesting stuff. Um, as does this one. This one deals with a lot of stuff in the artist industry and in general what we think about art. Uh, there, that's an element at play. It's how do husbands and wife uh, interact? Is it possible to be happy in a relationship? Are some people just destined to be sad? It touches on all those things. You know, those are all things that I loved about this movie. As far as things I didn't like, there weren't many. Um, I guess I could have been more invested in the main story or whatever. Um, 
and I don't know if that's a con to the this that story or if it's a a pro to how good the story was in the book. I I just loved watching the story that went on in the book. It was fascinating, but I but I still did like that outer story because it added an extra little element of of excitement to it, of of intrigue, you know, like how does this interplay, you know? And so I was very happy to see that. And I was invested in all three, even though I was definitely a lot more invested in the the book. Um, beyond that, I don't know if there are many negatives. Um, I can't give a 100% because I don't think it's that upper echelon, but I will go ahead and give it a 91 because I think it is a solid movie that you should go out and you should see because it's fascinating. It's a fascinating movie. I'm still thinking about it today. I saw it last or two nights ago. I don't know, movie binge the last couple of days, but I saw it two nights ago. I loved it. And I loved every second of watching it. I really, really enjoyed it. I think you guys should, should go check it out. Uh, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It means the world to me uh, if you even watch this thing. Um, but thank you, and keep it real.